Hi, this is Tom Mira from World Class Coaching with today's animated drill. Uh, today I wanted to talk about what I think is the most popular possession game in soccer throughout the whole world, which is the 5v2. A lot of people will call this a rondo as well. There's many different kinds of rondos, but a 5v2 would definitely uh, classify as one of them. So you see this possession game used as warm-ups. You see it used for work on passing and possession, working on support, uh, working on speed of play. Um, there, there's so many things you can work on it from the attacking perspective. Obviously, you could also talk about about the defenders, about getting pressure and cover and working together so that they don't get split. So there's a lot that you can work on in this 5v2 game, but I actually think we underutilize this game because there's many different ways to play a 5v2 that can bring out different aspects of the game and train different abilities. So I'll use this just basic format of five players on the outside with two on the inside. You know, this could be played on a 10 by 10 yard area. You could make it smaller and tighter to put more pressure on the attacking players. You could make it larger to make the defenders work harder. So there's a lot you can do just with this basic one. But if we change it slightly and just move one player into the center, and then we create a diamond on the outside of the area with one supporting player on the inside, now we're training this middle player. We're talking to this middle player about keeping their shoulders open to the field. I mean, obviously with the outside players, we're talking about body shape here as well, facing the field, keeping their body open, receiving the ball with their back foot. But this central player has different challenges because by being in the center, we need them to be kind of more diagonal so that they've got their shoulders facing one corner and facing the other, uh, depending on the side of the field that the ball is, so that they can then you know, support that ball and, and help you know, play with uh, in whichever direction the, uh, the opponent is not taking away. So if we flip everybody over here and we're going in the other direction, you know, now we want this player to flip and have their shoulders open to this part of the field so they can help you know, us connect over on this side. So I like this, you know, putting one player in the middle as an opportunity to train those central midfield players on your team and, and train them to make connections and go through. So that's one way that I found that works really well in a 5v2 with a player in the middle. The next one I'll use on a slightly different field surface. What we'll do is we'll use two grids that are connected to each other. And so we've got two connecting grids here and we'll put four players on this side. And we'll just have one defender in the center. And then we'll have a player on the far end and a defender in that far area. Now, depending on the age group of your players or what you want to emphasize, you know, these could be 10 by 10 yard areas. They could be eight by eight uh, to put more pressure on the passers and make it a bit easier for the defender. But the object here is to move the ball from this area through your players and then have it end up on the other side of the field with that player. When that happens, these outside players almost like outside midfielders or outside backs, would then slide down to create the support and create the diamond on this side so that we're able to connect passes through the team and then move the ball to the other side again. So we you know, get that transition from one side of the area into the other side of the area with these midfielders that are moving down to support the play. Now you could put more pressure on the players and have it four versus two. And if it was a slightly bigger area, maybe you go 10 by 10s again, you, know, you could keep it really tight and make it difficult to connect. Obviously, 4v2 is a lot more difficult than 5v2, requires a lot more movement from these outside players. So that's a variation that I really like. I really like the movement on the outside. In the last uh, diagram, we were supporting or we were training, I should say, the central midfield player and now we're training our outside midfield players. You could have both defenders be here and both defenders transition as well. So it's gonna make it harder for them and, and quicker transitions will have more benefit for the attack. So training these outside players to get up and down and support the play and recognize that moment when they can play through, when you know the opportunity's available. And you can put a limit on those. You can say you must make at least three passes before the ball's transition to the other side. Five passes, depending on the level of the players that you're training. So that's another good way of adjusting the 5v2, but you're still staying with the same numbers, same general concepts, but you're training some specific areas. Now, my very favorite way to play the five versus two is to play it as a two versus two plus three. So we'll just change these slightly here. We'll make these neutral players in the middle. So we're gonna have three neutral players, one in the middle and then one on each end. 
Now these end players, I put these players out of bounds. So they're out of play. They can't be pressured initially. As your players improve and, and they develop, you can make those active. But what we'll do is we'll play two versus two in this middle area now. So we've got the red, the uh, black team versus the yellow team with the three neutral players. And so what we do is if the yellow team's in possession, then they open up and what they're basically creating is a 4v2 on this side of the field with this target player at the far end being able to move and support wherever. So we're talking to these players about opening up and creating a shape. And this is not unlike you would see a goalkeeper rolling the ball out of the back to two center backs that have opened up with the defensive center midfielder checking in. And then you've got wide midfielders or forwards that are taking up space on the far end so that we create that penetration so that we can switch it. So the way the game would go is the yellow team would receive a point every time they're able to get the ball from one target on the end, either through the other target, you can require that, or you can allow them to just play directly into that target player at the very far end. So you can make them go to the middle player or just allow them to connect all the way at the far end. When they do that, obviously they have to slide up to uh, support the ball on this side. The defenders have to work hard to get back. If the defenders win the ball, then their objective is to get it to the nearest neutral player quickly and then open up themselves. And as they open up, then they're creating that same diamond here at the far end. They wouldn't go that far into the corner, would they? But just create good supporting angles in order to receive the ball. Now, if these players get pulled wide, then you allow that middle player to play straight through, that neutral player to play straight through to the other neutral and then switch it to the far side. That's vital that you allow that because then that forces these uh, players in the middle to make a decision. You know, do they move to cut off the middle or do they move to stay wide? Do they try to split the difference? And then, you know, the player on the ball has to make a choice about where they're going to play that ball. So, I think the rules you put on that are very important. But this is another great way to play in a five versus two situation, but you're making it more game-like. This is the most game-like of all. It's the one I like the most because of that, because you're training players to play as they would in certain positions. And you can point this out to the players so that they understand, okay, you're the right uh, you're the right outside back in this situation. So you're receiving the ball there or you're the two central defenders that have split to open up and you're going to receive the ball and, and connect. And you can put specific players into specific situations. This could be your goalkeeper on the far end. So your goalkeeper is training you know, how they're going to play the ball out of the back. This can be a forward on the far side. So they're moving to support and you're talking to them about always moving into that open gap so that they can receive the ball and support. Obviously, when the ball goes to the far end, then the rules change. But the central midfielder, this is another great opportunity to train this player to open up and keep their body shape open to as much of the field as they can, facing so that then when they receive the ball, they can quickly receive it on their back foot, turn and play out the other way. And these outside mids can get down or outside backs now. You know, however you want to categorize those players. But it's such a functional game, and it's so much more functional than just the traditional game of putting five players on the outside and two players on the inside that I think this one is, has a lot more benefits to the overall game and will give you a better transfer of training into your matches. I hope you like that. Uh, please try those out with your team. And in the comment section below, if you've got other ways that you enjoy using uh, with a five versus two, but making adjustments to that, we'd love to hear about them. Thanks a lot.